Time frame, images of a generation. We grew up in a simpler time. We sang. Hey kids, what time is it? We laughed. Hello, boy. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. We cried. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. He's been shot. Lee Oswald has been shot. We fought. We loved. We were attacked. Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. Our flag was still there. Now these memories come to life on posters that can be yours today. Go to HowdyBoomy.com for your copies today. That's HowdyBoomy.com. HowdyBoomy.com. Welcome to this edition of the Howdy Boomy Show. Uh, this is like an experiment for me. I've never done a podcast before. And as you'll notice, before you get to my beautiful mug, uh, you will see roughly a 60-second commercial entailing what the current HowdyBoomy.com website contains. It contains the posters. There's a nice video accompanying that. It shows you exactly a little bit of what each poster contains. Uh, one is the Baby Boomer Generation. One is the World War II Generation. One is a tribute to 9-11. And one is just sayings of people, places, and things from the Baby Boomer generation. The only thing that's not on there is the puzzle. The 1,000 piece puzzle, which is a replica of the initial poster that you can buy. Now, again, when you go to the website, you're going to see this, the Howdy Boomy Show. What that is, it's a, a blow up of a bumper sticker that you could buy for 1968. And below that, you will find the video, the Howdy Boomy video that is going to be showing you exactly what the new website is going to entail. We're making great progress on the website. It's going to be a go-to website, and you're going to find that if you're a baby boomer and you need anything in your household from soup to nuts, from travel to medical to banking, even if you want to post a Playboy-type centerful picture of a beautiful female, you're entitled to do so, and everything is going to be discounted because you're going to be buying this card. Now, if you buy the bumper sticker for $19.68, you're going to get the bumper sticker, and that is going to make you an official member of the Great American Peanut Gallery. You'll be able to advertise that on your card that we're a growing number of people, that it's a political force that's going to take place, sort of like take this country back to where it was when there were at least discourse, honorable discourse between civil people. Um, you'll also be able to get discounts on future websites and discounts on all the goods and services that the new HowdyBoomy.com website is going to look like. Take a look at that video. It's going to show you exactly what's going on. And believe me, it's going to be one of the biggest, best $19.68 purchases you ever made in your life. It's going to come back a hundredfold. As I said before, one of the perks, if you go to the automobile portion of the new website, you'll get $1,000 off on a purchase or a $1,000 off on a new lease vehicle through General Motors. Oil changes, gasoline discounts, everything is going to be available if you join HowdyBoomy.com and to partake of all the specials that the merchants are going to provide. I wanted to talk today a little bit about there was a situation where a police officer is being sued for using discriminatory language in an arrest or just discriminatory language. And uh, I, I, I can't imagine being a police officer. I imagine you, you get up in the morning and you know you're going to work. Uh, I know I'm going to work in the morning and I don't think I'm going to get shot, but a, a police officer can't think that way. And a police officer on a daily basis sees the worst in everybody, on the average. He doesn't go to too many ice cream socials, but he sees the worst in everybody. And after a while, that's got to sort of turn on you. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a life choice that he makes, but they're dedicated people trying to keep law and order. And I can understand 
the uproar over the latest flap where the police officers in Memphis killed a black gentleman, ev- evidently for no reason whatsoever, and, and uh, I just don't understand that, and they're going to be dealt with, and rightly so. But when I got, saw this lawsuit about using discriminatory language, I said to myself, wait a minute. I listened to a rap song the other day just to get some idea. And I'm going to give you some lyrics. I mean, some of it is lousy language, but I'm going to give you some lyrics out of a rap song. I got my black shirt on. I got my black gloves on. I've got my ski mask on. This shit has been too long. I got my 12-gauge sawed off. I got my headlights turned off. I'm about to butt some shots off. I'm about to dust some gats off. Fuck police brutality. I know your family is grieving, but fuck them. But tonight, we get even, we will. My adrenaline is pumping. I got my stereo bumping. It's all about to kill. A pig is going to be stopped tonight. And go on, fuck the police, fuck the... So I'm thinking to myself, what culture, what segment of our society entertains themselves by calling for the police officers to be killed? That, that totally, that totally uh, blows my mind. I'm a, I'm Polish. I'm a Polak, 100%. I dance a lot. I don't know of a polka, a bedek, a waltz that calls for killing the police. I don't know of any Irish songs. I don't know of any Italian songs. This is the only... There's hundreds of them. And I just can't understand that. Now, I know that they have sued. They went to the Supreme Court because they wanted to prove that this was just... Uh, freedom of speech, their own language. What culture entertains themselves by calling for killing of the police that they think that is entertaining and they think it's not going to fall on some ears that take them seriously? That, that, that totally, I just don't quite understand that. And here we are, we're, we're now in Black History Month and uh, there are just tr- some tremendous contributions Blacks have made to our society. But to use that as an example, to use entertain people by calling for the killing of the police is something I don't understand. And if I was a black a, a, a black gentleman, I, I, just, I, I just could not understand that. And if I every day went to my neighbor and spat at him or threw rocks at him, every day, every day, every day, and then all of a sudden I have to go over and say, hey, can you help me move something? What do you think he's going to say? So what do you think a police officer thinks when he goes into gets a call in a black community, knowing that they're entertaining themselves by calling for, for me to be killed? I just don't understand that. And I think relations could really enhance themselves to become more civil. If the black community would just admit that there are problems in the black community that they caused. The police didn't cause them. When he gets stopped by a cop, you behave nicely. You say yes or no, sir. I, I don't know. I, I There are bad police, as I, as I said before. Um, the bad police are hated by white or good police officers more than anyone else. So it, it's, uh, but they're not very ma- many in number. 99% of police are tremendous and they're bringing law and order. I saw a Charles Barkley interview recently where he said, it's ridiculous what the black community is doing. They need the police. And he said, when he gets stopped, be polite. I hope in the future there aren't very many more rap songs that call for killing the cops. But I still have to have some artist, someone explain to me how that is entertaining and how that doesn't cause harm. Uh, I thought to myself, going back to the 60s, what career choice could I make that I can put in my 30 years, 40 years, retire, have a good job? In other words, stay employed. What industry is there? Is there the banking industry? Is there uh, the financial industry? Is there the fast food industry? What industry seems to always be going on that is always in the news that always p- will provide some place to make money. Racism. 
Think about it. There are white supremacy groups. I don't know of any because I've never really looked in it, but I'm sure there are white supremacy groups that are making a fortune hating everybody else. We have seen that they formed Black Lives Matter recently, which is basically a terrorist group, which has been found out that the heads of it are taking money hands over fist and using it for their own good. Forget the black community. Me first. Jesse Jackson started Operation Push, the Rainbow Coalition, and basically what he did is he went to corporations and started demonstrating and basically, it was a great form of extortion that they would pay him to stop doing that. That's how he made his money. Followed by the Reverend Al Sharpton. I think Reverend Al uh, became a reverend at age five, which, God bless him, I don't understand how that happens. But every time there's a black versus white confrontation, he shows up. And he gets his funding, I guess, from... Corporations, which totally amaze me now in this whole culture, corporations are so afraid that they don't want to offend anybody. Even though these people may be big, they don't care. Let's give them money because we don't want to get them. We don't want to. We're afraid, which is totally ridiculous. And I said to myself, you know, this. It's amazing. It's a sad situation. And maybe 50 years, that'll be the same thing. Because think about it. If all of us got along. If all of us were compatible together, that we live together as one one solid community, Al Sharpton would be out of business. They'd all be out of business. All the racists will be out of business. You've had members of Congress back in the 50s, 40s, that were members of the Ku Klux Klan, which was a tremendous racist organization. I hope that racism is not an industry that goes on and on and on. But it seems to be perpetuating itself now. It seems to be, forget the American Express card, forget the MasterCard, forget the Visa card, forget the Discover card. The card played mostly now in America is the race card. There's a sports, was a sportscaster, Jamel Hill or something, who was on ESPN, and when the Memphis police officers killed this poor gentleman, she started yelling racism. She didn't even know the cops were black, and then all of a sudden, you can't find her with a search warrant. She's a racist. There's Joy Reid on MSNBC. She's a racist. She has to have black versus white in order for her to make money, and all these people who are promulgating this have money. They could care less what the real world is about. They have money. If they didn't have money and had to coexist and live together with other people, they might be still on a different tune. But it's it just amazes me how we can work together, but we have to overcome some obstacles. We have to admit to the problems and biases that we all have. And it seems to me, when I just read this rap song, that sometimes the black community doesn't do that. It's always somebody else's fault, and those days are over. I remember when Bill Clinton started his first campaign for president of the United States, and I was watching CNN, which was a great network at the time. And it was, I think, the first Super Tuesday of the primary, and he wasn't doing that well. And they had a black commentator talking about the black vote. And he said, we were suppressed and we were economically held back until after World War II when we migrated north and started working at the General Motors and the northern plants in this country. He said, now we can't say that anymore. But they still are. Why? It sounds good. It's an excuse. They won't blame themselves. It's always somebody else's fault. That's got to stop. The first thing to curing a problem is admitting there is a problem and admitting where the problem starts. And, and where I hope the black community starts doing that is admitting that there's a problem in the black community. It's not the police. Pull the police out of the black community and see what that's like. See if it's just livable. Are there bad police officers? Of course. 
but we have to have law and order. And as I said in previous podcasts, it all starts at the kitchen table. Visit the website howdybooty.com. If there's a baby boomer in your life, take a look at the materials. Take a look at what is offered there for gifts. Join the peanut gallery. Down the road, you're going to be very, very happy about being a member of the peanut gallery and able to partake in discounts on all the goods and services that's going to be offered exclusively through HowdyBoomy.com. Thank you for your time. Um, See you tomorrow, and I think we'll start talking about federal law versus state law. What's the difference? The big difference was abortion. And you'd be surprised how hypocritical some people are. Thank you for watching. Thank you for visiting HowdyBoomy.com. Again, enjoy the website. Enjoy the products. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless America.